So hello everybody, how are you today? In today's video I'm going to show you 7 tips that you might not know about Power BI that is going to make your life easier, for sure. So, as always, let me know at the end how many I managed to surprise you with, okay? 7 tips. Let's start with the first one. The first one was released quite a while ago, but just to make sure that you know about it, you know, when you are in Power BI service, this works just on the service. You have the possibility to export reports to PDF and PowerPoint, and they added a little bit uh, new functionality, which is this one, export with current values or default values. Current values, it means that whatever you filter your pane with, you know, the filters, the drill downs, the drill throughs, so however your report looks like, you can export it that way. So let's say that you have a general report, but you just want to see for your country. You can just filter by that and export if you pick current values. And also you can exclude the hidden tabs. Works both for PDF and for PowerPoint. Yay! Wonderful update. So next tip is a Power BI desktop tip. This is something that I need now and then. Not very often, but now and then I just need to get all my measures, and if not all, most of them, and just delete it. Delete them and start fresh. Okay? So, if you need to do that, you probably, you know, if you go to the new modeling pane, you can go in here and control click, and then you can pick them. But if you have a big, huge table, you know, it's going to take you forever. Or if you have a lot of measures, it's going to take you forever. So if you right click, you have the possibility to select all measures as, at once. And then you can control click the ones that you don't want to delete. For example, that one and that one I want to keep. And then you can just delete the rest with the delete button or, you, you know, just control delete. So very, very useful. And you can do the same with columns. You can select all columns at once. I don't know. I haven't used that one yet, but who knows? Did you know that? Okay, time for tip number three. And the tip number three comes from Mary. Thank you, Mary. This is a cool trick. Here's the thing. I have here a visual and I want to export to Excel. So, if I have the title off for the visual and I click here, export data, you see that the name of the file is data CSV, which, you know, if you are exporting a lot of tables from a lot of visuals, it's going to be a mess. You have to have data one, data two, but look at this. If we put, turn the title on, you can leave the default title. This is the default title. I haven't done anything. And you go here, export data. You see, it gets the name of the visual. Good, right? Thank you, Mary. Awesome tip. Okay, so now it's time for tip number four. Tip number four goes like this. If we go and create a new measure, this works for Power Query and M2. So we start here and we go calculate and then we have the sum of, I don't know, customer, whatever. You cannot sum the customer country, but it doesn't matter. That's not the point. And then you go filter. And then you say, oh, no, I don't want that. You can actually control set that like you can in most programs to undo what you just did. And then control Y will redo. And this works also on the Power Query Editor. I use it quite a lot. You know, you go back and forth. Like, mm, I didn't want that. Like, you, but... <laughs> So this allows you to go back and forth with the uh, the edits, which I find very, very useful. Okay, it's time for tip number five. Tip number five goes like this. Let's say we're in Power Query and we have a table and for whatever reason we want to sort it in order. And, uh, you know, normally you might go here and start moving things around and that is quite a painful process, you know? So if you want to do that, here's the way to do it fast. You can go here and choose columns. And then here you have the possibility to sort by name. You unselect and select back. And watch the magic 
happens. Here it is. Sorted. Cool, huh? Thank you, Chris Webb. This is his tip altogether. Okay, so it is time for tip number six, which also comes from Chris Webb. You're awesome. Okay, here's the thing. Conditional formatting. This is what we're going to do. We're going to get this and click on the conditional formatting. Uh, did you see that? Here, data colors in there. And instead of color scale, we want to do by rules. And I found this interface so confusing, like extremely confusing. Like, what am I supposed to wrote? write? So what I normally did, I wrote here, is greater or equal to a gigantic number. This has to be in number, not percent. Otherwise, you will get an error. Also, something that I don't know why it does it. And then zero red and then we have the new rule or say is greater than zero less than and then you have to write a gigantic number on the other word and this has to be number click ok and it won't do what you want because oh oh there you go yay now we got it okay so see what you're basically telling is like okay Below zero red, above zero um, green. But his trick is like this. You don't have to write anything in here. You can actually leave it blank. And then when you leave it blank, it will say minimum and maximum, you see? So you don't have to write a number at all. It will find which is the highest value and the lowest value, and it will just feed that. Or whatever it does. I don't know what it does exactly, but as you can see, it works too. If you go up and open it again, you'll see that it says percent. Whatever. Whatever rocks power behind both. I don't mind. You don't have to write any ridiculous number in there. Just empty it. Leave it as number. Otherwise, it won't work. This percent thing drives me nuts. And then, okay. Cool, huh? And finally, tip number seven, and this is something that I just discovered by chance, as always. And this is for the modeling editor again. You know, when you are importing new tables, at least for me, more often than not, the new tables will always show up somewhere here outside the, the pane. And more often than not, I would have to go in here, or you know, you have to go and grab them there, and fine, you can do that, but Nowadays, you have to have it big enough. You can actually see drag and drop, which makes easier just to move instead of having to go here all the time. So hopefully that, that makes your life a little bit easier. Anyhow, it does it for me for sure. You can just go in there and move this thing out of the way, for example, and then go back and then... You know what it would be great is just with the wheel of the mouse, like you do in other programs, just scrolling up and like zooming in and out. It just doesn't do it yet, hopefully soon. So you can control this with the wheel thing, but anyhow. Okay, so did I manage to surprise you with a tip? How many in that case? So do you have a tip of your own that you want to share with the community? Let me know and I will showcase it in the next tip video. Until then, Take care and uh, I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.